वी हैव टुडे मिस रंजनी कृष्णस्वामी जनरल मैनेजर मार्केटिंग तनिश टाइटन कंपनी एंड द कॉन्टेक्स्ट ऑफ दिस कन्वर्सेशन इज हाउ नॉन मेट्रोज आर ड्राइविंग द नेक्स्ट फेज ऑफ ग्रोथ इन द कंट्री एंड हाउ इज द ज्वेलरी कैटेगरी अडॉप्टिंग टू द चेंजेस दैट वी हैव सीन इन द लास्ट फ्यू मंथ्स so uh let's start with the pandemic situation and the lockdown and how's the jewelry category been uh, affected you know we saw the demand was completely stalled for a couple of months so how is the road to recovery been um so dipali it's been an interesting journey little did we know when we were closed down our offices on the 12th of march that we were going to have such patchy year it was almost like surreal you didn't know when you were coming back all of us thought we'll get over next month month after but now i think the reality is struck that we are in it for at least if not long the medium haul and it has had its implications on the business as you know april was a complete washout month um we were um we could not open our stores and as a retail business that's your largest sort of uh, source of consumer engagement uh, and sale uh we we pulled up our socks and said akshay tritya is a big month for i mean big event for us it is it's so much at the heart of all the ritualistic trappings that jewelry has so we said let's go online let's create a big mega event um through our e akshay tritya and we realized that there were about 54% of the consumers who were still intending to buy and which is something i'll talk about during the course of our conversation that we've always known that india is many indias and it is not one india but i think the pandemic has been so divisive in creating these mini indias these many cohorts in various parts of the country that we've come to realize that from a business standpoint the biggest disruption and the biggest sort of uh, assimilation that we've had to do as uh, brands as well as businesses is to understand that the um, the the opportunity matrix is uh, very diverse and you have many cohorts and there are also these cohorts which are moving in and out within a time frame you know some market was an opportunity about 3 weeks back it's gotten into lockdown so it's no longer an opportunity so you know you you're realizing the dynamism and the diversity with which um, all of us have sort of um optimized or had to deal with and that's been like the biggest uh, uh, learning implication or opportunity in this pandemic time uh, when we had the entire uh, or i can't say entire large part of our markets down uh, with covid and there was absolutely there was lockdown and stores were not open we had east thriving so much so that in the month of june they grew by 17% there were about 100 odd stores that grew over their last year numbers so this is what makes you feel that india was going through this uh, phenomenon in various stages various forms in various intensities and then east sort of got down uh, into the covid trap in july but they have they have come up in a big way in august which also told you okay. how the resurgence curve deferred in a metro scenario visibly a non metro scenario so i i think those were some of the apparent implications of this disruption uh, that you a realized that you had to be agile and nimble and that your opportunity matrix was diverse and dynamic and you had to cope with it there was some other large sort of uh, trends that happened because of the covid piece as well there was a huge and almost immediate adoption of of digitization um while the adoption was very varied across consumers and especially in a category like ours where uh, jewelry is such a touch feel thing i mean it has typically been an in person informed engaged kind of a process of uh, buying and selling and discovery people were very quick to adopt to the online platform compulsions were many some people were buying for investment some people were buying for wedding 
we realized in Nishan that people were buying for milestones. There was so much of doom and gloom that we were actually having these conversations with consumers that I want to give my wife a solitaire. Can you guys help me buy it from my store, from any store that's open or buy online? So you had all those uh, um, sort of very interesting discretionary purchases that were also happening. So, so as I was talking about this, digital adoption has been the second biggest consumer as well as a change for marketeers. Because irrespective of what was your digital journey, you had to really bootstrap yourself and at the same time, really gear up for this journey. Uh, so we, we came up with a bunch of innovations. We already had virtual try-ons, but whether it was assisted chats, book an appointment, video calling, uh, um, uh, uh, um, lots of things that one could start their journey and discovery online and then take it to the mm -hmm. offline uh, space. I think that's been the second disruption, a positive disruption that's happened. Um, the third disruption, if you can call it so, has been around the whole um, trust as a factor. I think we've sort of found that consumers, more so in the non-metros than metros, have gravitated to brands which they can trust have gravitated to brands which they feel will put their safety before anything else. So we've been, it's been very heartening to see our non-metros recover faster, grow more, because I feel we have been able to consolidate and gain share in those markets because of some of the safety norms that we brought in. And what is safety? Safety is just a manifestation of the trust that you want to uh, sort of profess to the consumer and the trust that you want the consumer to have in you that I am the safest place for you to shop. So I think those have probably been the three big um, sort of implications of this pandemic for us. Great. Uh, the last thing that you mentioned about people trusting your brand more, you know, uh, you know, how, is it because of the brand that you worked on so far, the Tanish brand, and why particularly the non-metros? Why, you know, you mentioned non-metros, you saw a lot of, uh you know trust coming through so what were the key reasons for that uh i think um a couple of reasons i think trust has been a very defining factor for us because we've built it over time and it's been um playing itself out both in metros and non-metros to be fair but why does why has it been a bigger multiplier in the non-metros is because i think in non-metros it's who is your competition so where are you positioning yourself in the marketplace? And I think in the non-metros, our positioning of trust was a bigger variance to what someone else was offering in the market. And that's why we saw a bigger swing. So let me give you a personal example. And it was uh, maybe a couple of weeks back that we were looking to, um, we had a, a family occasion and we were looking to order out. We, I mean, we are people from, very typical background. So splurging doesn't come naturally to us. But in this situation, our first option was let's buy it from a five star. Because somewhere the brand Taj had a certain trust factor that you said you felt as a consumer that it's a Tata company. They're going to make sure that they're going to, if there is a process and procedure of safety, I trust that they are abiding by it. So if you see, even in our own behaviors, we have also um, subliminally had these trust equities that brands have built over time. And we are pulling into those equities to make our own decisions as consumers. I think something like that happened, that happened for us also in small towns. When I was looking at a local dweller who probably did not have uh, a sanitized doormat at the entrance, who did not have sanitizers at every, uh, every workstation, who did not have a guard who had a, um, a, a PE equipment and a, a, a shield, who did not talk about sanitization of jewelry every hour, who did not talk about cleaning the store at every hour. I at once was able to see the variance between what Tanishq was saying and what my local jailer was not saying. And I think that's been um, at some level helping us gain consumers in those markets. That's a very interesting point. Now, reports indicate that there is a pent up demand for jewelry. You know, so far consumers, you know, they've shrunk their budgets. They've 
held on to their homes so now that the market is opening up and the wedding season is coming the festive season is coming so how are you gearing up to handle this demand i think for for one we are keeping a very close watch on the sentiment we are trying to understand where is the sentiment both in terms of what people will buy when people will buy and uh, in what quantum will they buy so i think it's very important to keep a close ear to the ground we're also speaking constantly we have these consumer diaries or consumer hangouts with our own consumers because we have we have a, a lion's share of our business coming from to beat customers so we are also understanding that what we are fundamentally picking up are a couple of things one um, that there is a um, there is a pent up demand and there is a need for sanction to spend and this festival will be that sanction that people will take to spend because people have deprived themselves for a very long time and i think um, now they will be measured about it it's not that people are going to go out there and buy something which is heavy and big i think there is going to be this underlying thought of uh, um what is um from a ritualistic perspective a ritual that you follow of buying and how do you do it within your means so there is a move towards lightweight jewelry so we have been very cognizant of that in what we will put out in the festive season we've also realized that there is going to be liquidity issues and the gold rates are paying to aunt like nobody's business so we are finding ways to solve the consumer problem because this is the time when brands have to reach out to consumers and say there is a desire that you want to fulfill and i as a brand i'm going to help you fulfill that desire so we have a couple of programs that are getting rolled out which allow consumers to uh, um, pre book their jewelry and you know pick it up at a later point in time whichever is the auspicious period when they want to pick it up we also have the gold exchange program that's getting rolled out since since yesterday which allows consumers to dip into their old gold which they are not using and use that as a segue to buy new jewelry for themselves we also have a uh, um, uh, buying plans we have a new riva ashirwad program which allows you to sort of plan your purchase through installments and be able to sort of uh, uh, get what you really want so i i think uh, long story short we're prepping ourselves on many fronts we're prepping ourselves on stores how safety will become very important when many more people will want to buy and the pent up demand is going to make them walk into our stores we are beefing up our digital ecosystem on how many consumers can um, sort of fulfill their jewelry purchase uh, um, through online through contactless selling so there are a bunch of things that we're doing both from a concept product as well as how they would realize this purchase most importantly for us it is also that this festive season is very important for us to um, reach out to our kariger community and this is a means for us to, to be able to give livelihoods to them so we are also seeing it as a purposeful brand as a completion of the journey where everybody is able to enjoy the diwali this year whether it is right from the kariger for whom we are able to uh, give not just other uh, financial supports but also dignity and livelihood and going all the way to various consumers across various segments who would be looking for uh, either wedding at one end or lightweight at the other end so we will have a plethora of options that's nice talking about your marketing mix that you go out to the market now for the festive season how are you you know segregating it for metros non metros what are the percentage of sales that you're expecting from net non metros and metros is there a comparison that you can share i would be able to share numbers with you because uh, that's because we're a listed company we we are not allowed to um, sort of uh, uh, share numbers at certain points in in our uh, in our in our cycle but i will say that non metros today occupy a la larger share than metros for us both in terms of number of stores as well as the size of business um and we also realize that sentiment will be maybe more buoyant in non metros than it is in metros we saw that uh, when we did our rd in uh, in tn or varalakshmi in uh, in karnataka ap we did the ganesh chaturthi we did with the with the janmashtami and we realized i with the tej so we did raksha bandhan so each of these local festivals have responded much better in our non metro markets 
and we are realizing that maybe it is the resurgence of sentiment maybe it is a larger uh, um, sort of respect for some of these festivals which we metro guys have sort of taken it in our stride maybe it's also the lack of the debt or the credit economy there we also we also know that uh, uh, the, the the agrarian income is going to be robust this 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 year so we do believe the festive will be very critical and very important for the north metros as far as the media mix is concerned honestly the public it's it's still an evolving reality in terms of how the mix would play out all i can say is it will be disproportionate in its investment in digital because we are seeing a lot of digital traction uh, even in the non metros our metro to non metro ratio has advanced significantly uh, um, uh, in favor of the non metros so we will be disproportionately investing in digital but having said that the other parts of the mix are still in the mix traditional medium still there um going forward what are the challenges and opportunities that lie ahead for the jewelry sector and what does the year look like for the category i think this will be a tough year because of uh, implications of q1 i don't think we can take that away but we are working towards a uh, um uh, um a higher rate of recovery in during the festive season and almost a complete recovery by q4 i think that's what you would have read in our uh, uh, notes to the market as well uh, because our recovery rates have steadily improved from me you know up till where we are sitting now a line share of our recovery is happening with, uh, with our um, existing customers but we are also seeing a lot of new customers come in as i was as i was telling you so it will be a tough year but the recovery will be has been faster than we have expected and we want that to continue so if i were very optimistic i would say that i would want the festive to be as good as last year and definitely a complete recovery by q4 challenges will largely be on sentiment how does the sentiment recover how does how do the postpones weddings because q1 this year was a big wedding season and all those weddings have gotten postponed some of them have come to q3 and q4 some of them have moved to q1 of next year so how are you able to optimize the the purchase on those weddings because wedding purchase is usually a 6 to 7 month process um uh, how are we able to um manage ourselves in the volatility of gold rates i don't think it's just covid it's also the volatility of gold rates which are playing the true aunt here so how do how do we manage ourselves there um and and the other big uh, uh, you know challenge for us will be how do we try and continuously identify uh, the challenges that the consumers are facing and be ready with options for them whether it's pent up demand whether it's lipstick effect revenge buying very rational investment buyer or whether it is the planned wedding buyer who's looking to see how what is the best time to buy for me because of all this that's happening around so i think the biggest challenge is going to be to understand that there are a lot of cohorts and we need to be catering to all of them and we need to be i know n is equal to 1 is a very big uh, um, statement to make uh, i i'm not going to make that statement but how do we customize ourselves to these cohorts and be able to personalize our offering to them both in product as well as in service because we are also a sir in the in the service business now lastly i was just curious to know when you initially mentioned during the lockdown period there was this demand from the east side and the entire city country was silent you know so just wanted to know some of the key insights or key consumer behavior changes that you had noticed at that time you know Uh, see the see the reality of uh, uh, the east was very different at that point in time they were not um, the 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 they were not yet uh, a significant red flags on the covid curve um and what was happening was that it was also a lagan season at that point in time q1 is typically a big lagan season in the east so i think the team in the east came back to us and said that uh, we think we are ready to have a normal q1 can you guys support us on this and therefore we designed special communication package and there was the only part of the country where we were ready to invest because we were also trying to conserve cash in q1 that was the right thing to do we didn't know uh, how the year will go on so it was always the right thing to do is to conserve cash and conserve and 
optimally uh, look at your working capital. So we looked at East as a specific market. We invested for wedding in that market with uh, both in terms of uh, um, making our stores ready uh, from a safety procedure perspective, uh, talking to our consumers about safety, uh, um, talking specifically to the wedding demand that was happening, uh, creating programs for us to capture the wedding demand, invest in the inventory in the east so that they were able to capitalize on the wedding demand so we almost looked at it as a separate cohort and gave it gave it its all and uh, with the help of a, a great retail team and a fantastic uh, cooperation from our associates there we were able to secure a good q1 so i think if if i were to step back and understand your large question that why do certain parts of the market behave dif of india behave differently uh, I think one, their COVID realities are different. They were probably being insulated at various points in time uh, as compared to the metros. I think there is a greater uh, uh, reverence for festivities and festivals as I was talking to you about and therefore maybe non-metros have performed very differently. Basic bounce backs have been much better. So it, if it is a function of uh, um, uh, the 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 severity of the problem or the nimbleness which which the administrations have probably solved the problem or communities have solved the problem that's another thing at play also consumptions have become localized uh, earlier if people were traveling to metros to sort of do a wedding purchase or to buy for a big occasion now that's not possible so a lot of consumption is happening within the 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 town or city that you're living in and you're not even thinking of going out you know and largely, I think a bit of uh, uh, reverse migration back to your own hometowns has also uh, fueled this demand. I was talking to some one of our uh, retail guys in the south, and he said a lot of upcountry Hyderabad is doing well because a lot of IT industry has said go work from where you are, and people have gone back to their hometowns, and 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 sort of uh, uh, their incomes have not come down because. They, they, they're still in the same companies that they were in. So there is this whole uh, um, redistribution of uh, uh, disposable income, which has happened from metros to non-metros. Maybe that has also contributed. It's just a hypothesis. I think it needs to play itself out with some numbers, but seems to be anecdotally uh, a, a hypothesis to gun for. Yeah, and much reliable one to go for, I guess. Now, uh, last question. Uh, you have various brands, like Tanish, Riva, Abir, and Mia. So uh, going forward, which are the brands, uh, you know, you're, which do you think will drive the growth going forward or you're looking at for the next coming season? I think each of these brands has a specific job to be done or tasks to do. So Tanish has the overall canopy, and it's been the most democratic uh, brand uh, uh, because we want to be seen as a national local dweller. So we want to be able to cater to a variety of needs. Mia, of course, talks to the younger consumer, and it's it's been a business which 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 should see a very good uh, uh, season in as you spoke about in terms of pent up demand because it speaks to a very different demographic and psychographic. Zoya speaks to a very relatively insulated demographic psychographic because it talks to a, a, a sort of high value customer or a customer who's sort of financially more secure. And I, I think that person has been um, relatively less affected by the financial vagaries of, uh, of, of COVID. So every each of these brands has a task to do and we're all trying our best to make sure that we have optimal offerings for the consumer. So I, this season is going to be important for all these brands. And it's important that the brands sort of prep themselves for what this consumer is looking for. And uh, some of those will be around thrift, around safety, around uh, best programs to be able to buy. Uh, and a, a very interesting assortment that makes it worth uh, spending the, their savings on. Okay, great. Uh, I hope these brands do well and the coming season does well for everybody, all of us and everybody safe. And happy. Thank and, uh, so thank you so much for spending time out and sharing insights. Sure. On it was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody.